Hi, this is Colin Rennie here, and welcome to another video on Rhino. This one is going to be about creating slots in a flat packed object. So, um, the project that the uh, students are going to be working on today uh, is the flat pack project. Uh, flat pack is a, a project that I run for my students where we are going to be water jet cutting 4mm glass, uh, and that design is going to be built in Rhino. Um, so we're going to build a three-dimensional object with uh, with some interesting geometry. We're going to then uh, flatten that out and then cut that on the water jet and then reassemble it. And one of the commonest, easiest ways of joining flat materials one to the other is to use a slot joint. Um, so I'm going to show you how to make a slot joint in this video. Just a very simple one, uh, nothing complicated. Um, but I'm going to show you the basic principles of doing that. It's worth noting though there are an awful lot of scripts out there that do this for you. So most of the scripts, when you, if you Google waffle scripts or something similar, um, you will find there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of scripts to uh, automatically create slots and and, uh, and 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 notches in each in each part in your X and your Y. Um, arrays. Um, so uh, beware of that. Um, the problem with the the um, uh, running these scripts themselves that they're very very useful, and very powerful scripts. But if you don't know what you're doing, they're not going to teach you anything about how you know, to make these objects themselves. So I'm going to show you the basics of how to do this um, using some of the Boolean tools here. So I'm going to start now. We're going to be working with four millimeter glass or four millimeter material. It could be anything. It could be you can you can change the numbers here and make it any material you want. Um, but we're working with four millimeter, four millimeter glass, so I'm going to work with four millimeter glass. So I'm first going to create uh, a box, um, just a simple extrusion box here. Um, I'm going to do this fairly arbitrarily, but I'm going to go. Um, so my my x dimension here, I'm going to say actually I'm not going to do it arbitrarily. I'm going to do it precisely. So I'm going to make it 100 millimeters long, and I'm going to make it four millimeters um, wide, and I'm going to make it um, 50 millimeters high. So there's a piece of, of glass that's 100 by 50 by four, um, and I'm going to now create a copy of that. Um, in fact, what I'll do is I'll rotate it around its midpoint. Um, so I'll make sure I've got my mid snap on here. Um, I'm also going to use Smart Track, make sure that's on, so I can create a, a exact point here within that. So uh, uh, actually, to be continuous with what I've done before, I probably should move this. So I'll pick my midpoint here. I'll pick my midpoint up here and find it. There it is. And I'll pick the intersect between those two, which is there, and that's the center. I'm going to move that to zero enter, so it's now in the middle of the uh, middle of the zero plane. Um, <clears throat> now I can take that object and rotate it around the zero using rotate. So this is the object I want to rotate. Press enter. The center of rotation is zero enter, and I want to rotate it 90 degrees. Um, except I need to do a copy in there, so I'll undo that. Do it again. Zero enter. Copy equals no. Copy equals yes. 90 enter and now I have a copy of that object on that point and press enter again just to finish that command. Right now I have two objects. Um, I'm going to put them up though. I want to put the perhaps put the bottom of that. Anyway, um, I move the top part there to the zero, but it doesn't matter too much. I'm on my shift key down to make sure I toggle it up. Not too worried about the Z zero. Okay, so I now have two objects. Now obviously. That's a physical impossibility. You can't have two objects going through the same point. They won't do it. Uh, but Mr. Fuller was famous for uh, st st stating that fact. Um, but what we're going to do here is to create an intersection between these two so that we can work with that geometry and then create slots using that intersection. Now, um, a Boolean tool here, intersection, which is um, not a Boolean tool, that's a Boolean tool. Intersection is this one here. Intersection is actually a destructive process. So if you, uh, if, I'll show you, if you take these two objects here and I do a Boolean intersection between the two, um, you will, that's it. I need to come up with two, hang on. first set. So first set's this set, second set's this set, and it will destroy the other ones there. Now, I don't want it to destroy the other ones, I want it to keep it, but Boolean intersection doesn't give you the option to not, if you notice in the command bar, to not delete the input. It does it for you, it always does it. So um, I'm going to create a copy of these first. I'm going to press Control C, Control V. I'm going to take those and hide them. So now 
just press the hide button there or you could type in hide these are now single instances but I've got a second set identically placed underneath in there in the, in, in the hidden objects you could also put them on a different layer and turn the layer off or lock the layer um, but in for the, this is how I'm going to do it for this one so I've got these two objects here intersecting I'm going to create an intersection between the two so I'm going to use my boolean intersection between this object and this object and I have this kind of um, chip french fry um, so I've got a long french fry here and this is going to be the basis of my um, material cutting tool so if I bring the objects back here you can see this thing inside here this poly surface inside here I want to take half of it from this surface this solid object here the, the top half for example and I want to take the bottom half from this surface from this um, poly surface here uh, so what I need to do is to split this object into two. So first I'll put these objects back under the hide tool. I take these up this, this piece here and I'm going to split it. Now um, I want to split it exactly in the middle. It's not actually precise. You don't have to be precisely splitting it in the center. It doesn't have to be in the middle. You could split it anywhere but just to be accurate I'm going to split it dead center. So I'm going to use my um, polyline tool to create a line here. I'm going to use my mid snap and I'm going to create a line through this object, holding my shift key down to get me an ortho toggle. Press enter when done, just to ensure I've got full intersection between these two. Just move it away here because it's quite, it's quite an interesting point about the split tool here. You can see these two things aren't intersecting. But if I highlight the, uh, the front viewport where they are intersecting, you can see apparently these two objects do intersect in front view, but in none of the other viewports they intersect at all. Uh, there's the line there in right view. You can see it's not intersecting in any of these viewports apart from front. So it's intersecting in front. I'm going to use this as a cutting tool, like a cheese wire, to cut straight through this chip, and it's going to give me two pieces. So I'm going to use the split tool here. Split asks for the object first. Trim asks for the cutting object first. So split is the other way around. So I'm going to choose split. Uh, I'm going to split this object here, press enter when done. This is the object I'm going to split with, the cheese wire, press enter when done. And now I have two objects. Okay. Um, the thing is, though, with these objects, that because Rhino is a, uh, a breadth modeler, it will model things according to the boundary, you have two hollow objects. They're not, um, they're not solids. You've split them in two, but you haven't capped them. So I need to cap these objects here. I'm going to show you this in uh, X-ray, so you can see. Um, you can see through the object now. Um, actually, I prefer ghosted. It's a little bit nicer. There we are. Um, so I'm going to create caps on these two objects here. So I'm going to type in cap. You could you could do solid cap planar holes. Cap will only work if the hole is planar. Command is cap, enter, select surfaces or poly surfaces to cap, well it's this one and this one, press enter, and now you can see it's created an end cap to each of these. So that one's got an end cap, that one's got an end cap, and that's what I want. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do, just for the sake of uh, clarity, is to um, put these on different layers. Give my layer palette a little bit more room, so you can see the colors. Uh, I'm going to give a couple more layers here, uh, and I call one top. bottom and go make one blue I'll just make it true blue and I'll make one true red like that so one's blue one's red I'm going to move this one here which is the top one onto the change object layer and I'm going to put this one here onto this one here change object layer I might just move them around as well come on go there that's not letting me move it Never mind. Um, it's, it's inconsequential, really. So I've now got those objects there, so you can see them slightly better. So I want to now subtract one from the other. Okay. So I want to subtract uh, the red one from uh, this piece and the blue one from this piece here. So I'm going to need to use a Boolean difference. Boolean difference is the tool that you use to subtract. Boolean difference is this one here, or in solids. You'll see it's the second one along here, Boolean difference. 
Okay, so Boolean difference, select surfaces or poly surfaces to, to subtract from. That would be that surface to start with. Press enter when done. And I'm going to take the, uh, the red top part there down to that one. Press enter, and now I've created a struct. Now, because I had delete input equals yes on there, it's deleted that red bit. If I had no in, it would keep it. Uh, I'm going to do exactly the same thing, but the other way around with this one and this one. And now I have an intersecting set, something that in reality, not in pure reality, but um, more or less, would work. So I have a slot in one and a slot in the other. Um, and that's the basis of slotting, you know, so the, sl the slotting joints, um, and they're, they're used extensively in, uh, in, in construction techniques, um, and very, very useful to, to know how to do. Um, so the next video I'm going to show you some slightly more advanced uh, techniques to create slots um, or to manipulate objects um, with more angles and create slots that have more and you, you notice that these are perpendicular to each other, these are 90 degrees to each other but they don't have to be, this one could be angled um, and you could create angles from other angles as well to create to build up angles so um, that's what I'm going to do in the next video is to show you how to, uh, how to control your angles a little bit more and, and experiment and create more interesting objects and more interesting geometry. But for now, that's the first one. So I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, take care and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.